Welcome back. Hello. Long time no see. Biagio, how What's you up? feeling? I'm feeling good. Just glad I got the win. How did it feel to get your first win in Vegas? Oh man, it, it's I'm super grateful. Uh, I was definitely nervous as soon as the the fight started. Of course, you know every fighter is nervous before a fight. Um, but uh, my coach screamed, "Calm down!" And then that's kind of when I started to calm down a little bit more and uh, get a little bit more comfortable. So uh, gra grateful for the win. Uh, I got my first win in Vegas. You know I wanted to, you know, show the people of my town, my hometown, uh, all the hard work I've been putting in, and it's only going to get better from here. So you said throughout, you know, throughout this that this fight camp that you know pressure really hasn't got to you because you, your name and you've got you've had the lights and cameras in front of you since your football career but now that now that this fight's over was there a little bit more pressure on you this this fight camp being in vegas yes i, I would be lying if i said no um there, i definitely feel the pressure you know uh, i actually i battle the pressure every single day so um it's just like i said i think what's more important is dealing with the pressure but uh, yeah, I definitely felt the pressure, you know, fighting in Vegas. You know, I got the crowd cheering for me. I have so much expected of me. I'm Muhammad Ali's grandson. You know, if I lose, they're gonna say, oh, Muhammad Ali's grandson's not what we thought. You know, there's just so much uh, that's going to be said if, if I lose and, and stuff like that. So yes, the pressure is always gonna be there, but I'm just grateful and alhamdulillah that I got the win tonight. And finally for me, PFL is going to uh, Atlanta next. Are you hoping to hop, hop on that card? Yeah, I, I want to get as many fights as I can. You know, the experience that I'm getting right now as an amateur fighting on that on this stage is it's priceless experience. No other uh, amateur I think is, is getting experience like this, exposure like this. So I'm gonna take advantage of this and um, just get better and better and better. Piazza, can you kind of explain how the, what the ring walk was like? It seemed that you were kind of hyped up while you were walking down to the octagon. Just how was that moment like? Oh man, I, I was just, uh, I was taking in all the energy from the crowd, you know. Uh, I'm fighting in Vegas, you know. I know a lot of people here in Vegas. I grew up here in Vegas. I played at Bishop Gorman High School. I was, had a successful run there in Vegas. So, you know, I, I'd say my name is a little bit relevant in, this, in the city in, in terms of what I did in football and now what I'm doing in combat, combat sports. So. The, the crowd was just, it was fuming me, and I was hype. I was ready to go, and um, yeah, I was just, I was ready to go. <laughs> I remember you said uh, your very first wrestling practice, you were crawling by the end of it, but you showed some really good takedown defense yeah. in this fight. Just, can you just talk about how much you've improved on the grappling side of it? Yeah, um, you know, I feel like I could have done a lot better in this fight in terms of sticking to my jab, you know. Going into this fight, the game plan was to kind of use that jab to, to find him, find where he's at. And I think in the back of my head, I knew he was going to try to wrestle me. So I think that's why I was a little bit hesitant to using my jab and, and setting up my right hand because my right hand is really strong. Um, yeah, I, I knew he was going to try to shoot. You know, uh, I'm a striker, right? So I'm a boxer. So people are going to try to wrestle me and stuff like this. But, uh, you know, I, I have great takedown defense. The past three camps, I've only been grappling and wrestling, so my wrestling and my grappling has gotten a whole lot better. Um, but yeah, like I said, in the back of my mind, I kind of knew he was going to shoot, so that's why I, was, I think I was a little bit hesitant to using my jab to set up my power hand. And just the last thing for me, uh, it feels like with your last thing, you already got a target on your back, but it feels like the more you win, you're going to get just even more pressure and more pressure. Mm -hmm. Just how are you kind of preparing for that? Um, what I'm doing now, you know, there, I feel like there's nothing else I can really do to prepare for that. It, th that type of stuff is hard to prepare for, so it's how you deal with it, you know. How do you mentally deal with this type of pressure? How do you mentally deal with the, a big target on your back? These are things that, that I try to improve and, and I work on every single day. So, you know, I pray a lot. I, I'm very, very close to God. Uh, God is limitless in, in what He can do for me and, and other people. And, anybody who, who worships him so uh it's just dealing with the pressure you know uh there's no one answer to dealing with it one more, one more thing for me do you kind of do what your grandfather did that self-talk of like i'm the greatest i'm the mm -hmm. greatest do you do that often i do it all the time i do it you know i work at a nightclub here so it's really really loud and usually if you're self-talking at the grocery store it's a little <laughs> weird <laughs> but i work at a nightclub and it's really loud so now you know uh if you were to see me self-talking at the nightclub you'd probably just see <laughs> yeah it, it would be kind of normal so <laughs> yeah I, I do do that a lot what do you think your grandfather would say uh, to you right now after this one tonight i know it's the beginning of a, what is a long journey for you but what do you think he would tell you he would tell me he's proud of me and to stay humble those are the two things he would say you know uh, when i was a kid he said stay humble i'm going to take that with me for the rest of my life
came out to act a fool. Whose decision was it for that song to be your walkout song? <laughs> that was my decision, man. And I think, um, uh, I think the the lyrics, I, I'm too fast for y'all, man. That I wanted to, you know, use that. And I like Ludacris, so yeah. <laughs> You talk about the influence of your grandfather and then wanting to be your own person. Yeah. But the speed that you demonstrate, where are you going to separate that? The, the, the speed in terms of what kind of speed? The, like the speed. Hand that you speed. Hand yeah. speed that you demonstrated is, is your grandfather's so goals. What are you yeah. going to do different? Um, uh, I mean, we're in different sports, you know, I'm in MMA, you know, definitely, uh, I definitely got the speed, I think, inherited a little bit, the explosiveness inherited. Um, he he had a really good right hand and uh, he used his jab a lot. If you watch him, you know, he kind of circles out and he's using his jab to set up his right hand. Um, in MMA, I can't really do that sometimes because I'll get low kick, kind of like I did in the fight. You know, I got low kick twice, you know, there, there were some good low kicks. So I wanted to kind of adjust myself and um, use my jab differently. I didn't really use my jab as much as I wanted to because like I said, I was expecting him to shoot for takedowns and do that. And I was a little bit hesitant to using my jab because I felt like he was going to time that and to, to come in for a shot. So uh, once my coach said, you know, settle down, that's kind of when I started to get a little bit more calm. Um, my coach said uh, speed change, which means kind of back him up and set up the right hand. And that's exactly what I did, and that's what finished the fight. You mentioned a lot about pressure. Does that go away with each win? It's going to always be there. No, it, it might be a little less pressure each fight, but. It's, it's going to always be there. I, I think, honestly, I think it's going to get worse. Someone actually, I, I don't know who asked the question about Jake Paul. Was it Jake Paul? Yeah. Yeah. He was interested yeah. in facing. Yeah. So he was uh, Jake was doing the live stream, the PFL right now, mm -hmm. and his co-host asked him uh, about I'll doing a two-fight deal, fight you in MMA, Nico in, in boxing. And we asked Nico for his response. So. Um, Nico fights at 162. I fight at 155. You know, I, I, I have no problem with Jake Paul, but you know, he should fight someone his own size. I don't know why he's trying to fight people smaller than him. Um, he fought at 185 cruiserweight as in boxing. Uh, fight at 185 in MMA. I think he did mention the uh, size. Of his, uh, he didn't actually bring up Gonzalez. Yeah, he's a lot. He's a lot bigger than me. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why. Why he's trying to fight somebody smaller than him? Fight somebody your own size? I don't understand. <laughs> Biagio, uh, now that you've started to get this experience under your belt, are you starting to visualize or put any sort of um, artificial time frames on when you may be ready to make that crossover? Are you, yeah. Is it starting to come into focus now that you're getting to where you're at? Not even close. I, I still got to get a lot more fights before I'm ready to turn pro. Last question, bro. 